dear students we have been discussing about the various features under the geometric design and lately we started with the module 2 which was related with the cross sectional elements and in that cross sectional elements towards the late we were discussing about the road furniture in the previous interaction we talked about two things one is the markings which needs to be provided at an intersection or a junction and another thing which was quite specific in nature was the use of word messages and arrows. In the case of junction markings, we talked about say the stop markings, the giveaway markings and likewise other things. In the case of word messages, it was quite specific in terms of to define the condition ahead on a road to the driver, which may be in terms of say a school is there and therefore the driver should reduce the speed of a vehicle. So, we can say either go slow or the school ahead. Or similarly, it can be for the use of different type of modes, the whatever the spaces are being provided on a carriageway. Or if there are certain specific movements, then they can also be defined by way of use of arrows on the pavement. And there we talked about three categories of arrows and they are having different dimensions, different lengths in that sense. Now in today's interaction, we are going to move forward. And we will try to see that what are the various types of markings which are made on a pavement so that it makes sense for this use by specific modes or by the different type of movements which can be there either at a mid block section or when you are approaching an intersection. So, there may be a possibility of merging, diverging or there may be a possibility of uh, the approaches being widened or being narrowed down because of certain reasons. So, all of these things we are going to talk about. This will be followed by the object markings. Many of the times you may find that there are certain things being placed on the carriageway and if they have not been marked properly, then there is always a possibility of a mishappening. A crash may take place specifically during night if they have not been marked with the reflector type of paints and they are not visible to the driver because of any of the reason and that creates a problem. And then towards the end, we are going to talk about the road marking materials and we will see that if we can cover that in this presentation itself. So, let us start with the markings related to the modes and the various movements. Now, if you look at this particular slide, then what you can find is that there is a mid block section being shown and on that mid block section, we have provided a, a speed breaker. And you can also see that on this particular stretch, the center line marking is there because it is a two lane system. There is a one lane on this side and a second lane on this side. So, two way traffic is moving on this particular road. When we are approaching this speed breaker, what you can see is that the line has become continuous one instead of a broken one. That means, it is now trying to tell to the driver that you need to maintain a restriction in terms of the change of a lane or use of a lane in terms of a overlapping condition. That should not happen in this particular reach. When you talk about the markings which have been done on the speed breaker, so this design of the speed breaker is maybe something like this. We can say that it is a parabolic design. Now, in this parabolic design, the vehicles are moving in both the directions, of course, in their own lanes. And when they are moving in this direction, then the arrows have been placed or these triangles have been placed in such a manner that it defines that you are going to traverse it from this direction and similarly in the other reverse direction also. At the same time, there is another way of defining that you are not supposed to move from this side. So, this is another type of a design which is being used at this location. So, whatever is the size of this speed breaker, we are not at the moment discussing about the size and design, but what we are trying to look at is how it looks like when you are looking at it in the plan condition. Now, when this is being provided, then obviously the driver needs to be warned that there is a speed breaker ahead and that is being done by way of the placement of a road sign. And this road sign is going to be placed at a certain distance d before the speed breaker. We are going to talk about the road signs, we are going to talk about the placement of the road signs subsequently. So, at the moment we are just looking at it that this needs to be provided on both the directions. 
And then the profile needs to be designed that is a part of the designing process. So, a parabolic profile is being designed. So, therefore, there is going to be a transition and instead of having a straight profile like this, we need to make it smoother so that the vehicle moves at the top of it very easily. And when we are talking about all of these things, then it also speaks of the design in terms of what should be the radius of this particular element being provided and what should be the length which is defined as a chord length and these are dependent on the speeds. As the speed increases, the radius and the chord length is also going to increase. Now here, what we can see is that there is a certain stretch which is being defined by these extremities and these extremities are defining say this is an hazardous stretch or there is a lot of activity in this particular area and there is always a possibility of a crash. So, a crash propensity is higher in this particular area. Now, the driver needs to be warned about this. Now, how to do that? For that, what we are using is we are using a set of six transverse lines. And these six transverse lines, they are 300 mm wide and they are being placed at a distance or a spacing of 600 mm. So, if we go by that, it means we have 0 0.3 into 6 plus 0 0.6 into 5 is the total dimension which is going to be there for the placement of these transverse lines. Now, these transverse lines are doing what? They are trying to tell the driver that there is something ahead you need to be cautious and therefore, start reducing the speed of your vehicle. So, that if there is any eventual condition which appears on the carriageway, you are in a position to avert that. So, that is why we are trying to provide this set of transverse lines. Now, these set of transverse lines, they are not provided as a single one set, they may be provided in more than one set and that is what is being defined here which again is based on the approach speed, where the approach speed if it is changing from 50 kilometers to 100 kilometers per hour, what we can see is the set changes from one set to four set. Now, here this is an example where we have a four set condition and in this four set condition at what distances from the hazardous location, we are going to provide these transverse lines is being defined by way of D1, D2, D3 and D4. And these D1, D2, D3 and D4, they are variable in nature, but the distances are being taken from the extremities of the hazardous stretch. And they are changing like 50 meters, then 80 meters, 120 meters and 180 meters as a distance being taken from this direction or from this direction in both of those cases. And that is how we are trying to make a driver aware of having a sense of safety while driving. Now, this is another case and is quite predominant in our conditions, specifically when you talk about the village areas or the remote areas or the areas in the uh, rural economic uh, areas, there, there we have a railway line and this railway line is being crossed by a road. So, we have a rail road junction. Now, at this railroad junction, if the train is coming on this particular track and the adequate measures has not been taken, then it may again turn out to be in a most fatal condition. So, so as to avert that, what we are using is we are using the transverse lines as we talked about uh, in the previous slide at the specified distances D1, D2, D3 and D4. This becomes our extremities of the hazardous location or a zone. We are providing the gates here. So, it is a gate operated rail crossing. From that gate, we have a stop line being provided just before that. And then before the stop line at a distance of 15 meters, we are providing a hump or a speed breaker. So, that is a sort of a safety measure which is being taken. So, we are first of all telling the driver who was coming from say is this direction or coming from this direction that there is some hazardous situation is start reducing your speed 
and then at certain point of a time they have a speed breaker. So, it reduces further and if there is a requirement of a stopping then the stop lines are there just ahead of the gate and they stop there unless it until the gate opens they cannot move forward. So, this is uh, another thing and all of these things they are apart from the rest of the markings which needs to be there on a pavement. Say you can see the arrow markings, you can see the center line marking. Now, here the center line marking because you are approaching this railroad junction, it is being provided as a continuous white line specifying that unless it until there is an emergency kindly do not move into the next lane and remain in your own lane and keep moving. So, that is the way we can ensure the efficiency, we can ensure the safety. This is a case of a T intersection and in this T intersection say we have a major road on this side and say a minor road is being provided on the other side. Now, the traffic which is coming from the minor road that needs to take care of the traffic which is moving on the major road in the two directions and this traffic is moving at a high speed. Now, when this traffic is on a high speed, the vehicle which is getting from this direction or going to this particular direction depending on the requirement needs to find an opportunity so that they can do this maneuver without having any hazardous situation arising at that intersection. And for that reason, the very first thing which is being provided is again a speed breaker. Obviously, there is going to be a sign here which will define that there is a speed breaker ahead. Then we are also providing this particular design and this design is related to the yield. So, there is a triangle and that triangle associated with these markings, we discussed about it in the pavement markings. So, we talked about the stop line markings as well as the give way or the yield markings. So, this is what is being provided here. Now, one additional element which you can see is this particular one. So, there is a provision for bicycle. So, it may happen that at the back end there is a bicycle path and now it is being merged in this particular area. So, we have provided a, a space like this by way of arrangement and it is also being marked at the top of the payment and this is to be used by the bicyclist and then finally, these bicyclists can go back out of the system in this form. So, that is the one way if uh, to us to provide these type of crossing facilities for the active transportation. This is a case of a toll plaza. So, what you can see is a, there is a four lane divided system on this side. So, we have a median in between and this median which was a physical median has been transformed into a flush median by way of the markings on the pavement. So, you have a continuous yellow line and in between that there is a diagonal and this diagonal is getting displaced in the direction of travel of the movement of vehicle. So, that is what uh, we have discussed previously too. What you find is that at this location where the plaza is, we have multiple lanes and these multiple lanes you can find that there are something like seven lanes on one side and the seven lanes on the other side. Well, all of these things depends on the amount of traffic which is there and it also specifies that the two lanes which are there. So, there are three things being provided here and four on the other side and similarly three here and four on the other side. We are going to talk about this tool plaza design towards the end of our this uh, geometric design course as a design of facilities. But what we are trying to look at is that if we are going to provide these things, what we can see is that there are booths here, there are chavrons on this side and these chavrons have been extended, okay. There are these hatch markings, so as to define that the people should not move from one side to another side. But during emergency, if there is a requirement to operate this particular lane for this directional traffic because there is a lot of pressure, then this allows to do that. Otherwise, if we have extended this uh, physical median, it would not have been possible. Here, what we found is in the first case, there is a bus bay. So, there is a carriageway. So, this carriageway is there, traffic is moving on this carriageway. It is maybe say in two lanes, three lanes, whatever number of lanes are being provided. And because the traffic is high, so we are providing an island and chevrons. 
So, island and chevrons has been provided here and we are doing a flaring and this flaring is going to be maybe at a rate of something like a minimum 1 in 10 okay and uh, if we can have one space we can do it more better one than can go to 1 in 15, but usually 1 in 10 is what being exercised here. So, this is a space where the buses are going to stop and the passenger shelter is being provided and therefore, the passengers are going to board on that bus. So, what you can see is typically all lane markings are there, the edge markings are there, then chevrons, islands and here one another thing being shown which is going to be provided at this location or if you are talking about the other side then usually not required because now you are going out of the system here. So, we try to protect the nose of this island by way of provision of this yellow and black uh, vertical device which says that there is an object here. We are going to talk about this further. The another case is a truck nearby. So, in the case of this truck lay-by, what you found is that there is a sufficient space which is being provided for the parking of the trucks. Again, we are going to talk about the bus bays, we are going to talk about the truck lay-bys in the design of facilities, but here our focus is that what type of markings are going to be there. So, again you can see the lane markings, you can see the edge markings, you can see the chevron markings protecting the nose of the islands. So, all of these things have been provided in these cases. Now, Apart from talking about that those type of markings which are defining that where the traffic should divert and move or stay or all of those things. In these cases what you can find is there is a dedicated bicycle lane being provided and this is a being separated out by separated out by way of a markings like this the two parallel lines which may be at a distance of say 1 meters and they are being provided with the diagonals. So, it defines that you should not use this particular area. This particular area cannot be used even by the bicyclist or cannot be used by the motorist too. Apart from this here in this case what you find is there are steel bollards being provided, vertical bollards. They are the additional safety features being provided towards the vehicle side and probably there is a parallel parking of the vehicles or the cars just along this particular hatched area. On the other side you have a dedicated pedestrian path and then it is being separated out and we have a multi function or multi utility zone MFZ or MUZ whatever we want to say in which the trees, poles, lightings etcetera can be provided and they have been separated out again by way of the use of texture so that everything becomes distinct for use. In another case when we talk about point 2 or the photograph 2 what we find is there is a dedicated crosswalk, there is a bicycle path which is moving in this direction as well as in this direction and it is being textured. Okay. So, there is a signs being provided the design is being provided in such a manner that the people can go up and down by use of this particular frayed section with respect to the footpath and the carriageway. Now, the stop condition is also being provided here wherein the priority has been given to the pedestrians to cross and then the bicyclist can cross here. So, that sort of a creation has been done in this case. If we talk about the third one what you find is that there is a zebra crossing a properly marked zebra crossing with the, the median gap and this median gap works as a pedestrian refuse. We have discussed about it. It is being provided with the bollards in this form and there is a sort of a stop line being provided ahead of these pedestrian markings. So, the dedicated area is being provided by way of these markings and it also says that when you start crossing from the curb side then kindly look right so as to see if the traffic is coming from this direction. So, if the traffic is coming from here you should ensure that you are not going to be hit by it. Then the next set of uh, markings as we said are the object or the hazardous location markings and they are different sets depending on what needs to be defined and in what form it needs to be defined. So, we are going to use white 
black and yellow mostly or the combination of these are going to be there. In most of the cases you find that they are white and black, but in one case we are talking about the black and yellow. You might have seen on the curved sections. So, on the curve these are being provided to define that how the curve is taking a turn and they are provided at a certain distance above the pavement surface. So, these things can be defining may be the unidirectional movements or the bidirectional movements. They may be talking about the simple obstruction which is there or they may be talking about the width of those particular things which have been provided at a certain location. Okay. So, uh, that is the way uh, these particular markings can be utilized. So, if we see here then what we found is that there is a well drawn pavement marking on this particular stretch you have a median you have a two directional traffic being defined by arrows like this. There is a center line being provided for uh, uh, the two sides or you can say they are basically the lane markings here because the traffic is moving in one direction only. And then there is an edge marking there are the curb stone being provided with the white and black color. Okay. So, these are the things being provided, but one thing which is being done here is that the yellow paint has being provided in this stretch and this yellow paint is going to tell that we are not going to utilize this particular area. Now, for what reason we are not going to utilize is being defined by way of this road sign which says that the parking is not being allowed or the standing is not being allowed at this particular location. So, that restriction is there and this restriction has been repeated as you can see that at a distance of 50 meters interval it is being repeated in this case. Now, once this uh, restriction is over then again there is another road sign being provided which says that the restriction ends here. So, that is another way of uh, looking at some typical situations which may arise at some location and we need to do that. Here what you find is that there is a carriageway being provided but there is an object on the carriageway. So, the width of the carriageway is actually reducing in a particular direction. So, so as to define that there is something on a carriageway what we have done is that we have provided the markings which are in yellow and black strips and these strips are total 6 strips of alternate colors which are 300 mm wide and they are inclined towards the that particular location where the traffic is moving. So, the traffic is moving in this direction it has been inclined in this form. Of course, when the traffic is coming from the other direction then the markings are going to be there on the opposite side in this case. Then another thing which is there is that uh, uh, these particular markings which have been provided then the width of this marking is also to be talked about and this width of the marking should not be less than 450 mm in any case or mostly it is going to be up to the width of the obstruction which is there. But if this obstruction is too wide then we can restrict it to 450 mm only. Another marking which is being provided at the top is basically defining the height constraint and it is warning the driver that kindly look at it that whether your vehicle will be able to cross this particular location or not. And when this hazardous situation is there then it is also being defined by way of the provision of the chevrons in front of it. So, what you can found is that there are chevrons being provided. Now, in case that this particular object is at a distance away from the carriageway then we can provide the black and white markings again in the same form inclined to 300 mm wide 450 mm uh, in the total width of an object okay, and the 6 strips of that all of those things are going to remain the same. The only thing is that because they are at a distance the color has changed from yellow to white. So, that is what we are looking at. Here there is another case where we are talking about whether we are allowing the vehicles to stop or we are allowing the vehicles to park or not. So, in one case we are saying okay, if there is a requirement we can do that, but in another case we are saying no that is not allowed and we have a continuous yellow marking being provided here. 
Another thing which can be there is that many of the times there is a problem with respect to the differently abled people. So, one thing which we is being talked there is an audible or vibratory markings. And these audible and vibratory markings they are being provided the way as being shown here, but they are going to protrude at the top of the pavement surface by way of something like 11 mm and they are placed at a distance of 500 mm from one another. And if there are two strips being provided and then at the center of it, it is being done, then they are having a width of 200 mm. So, that is the way these audible and vibratory markings are provided and as soon as a vehicle tire moves at the top of it, it will create a noise and that makes uh, the any other road user just attentive enough to see that yes, something is happening and they have to take care of it. Now, when we talk about all of these markings, now it is uh, prudent that we also talk about the materials which are used to create those markings and that is what is being talked here. There are different type of things or alternatives which are available as you can read here. They are in thermoplastic in nature, they can be cold rolled, they can be glued down plastic strips. So, these are prefabricated plastic strips which are glued down or prefabricated tape markings or refractorized stripping powder. So, it is being fixed by thermal uh, conditions being created or metal or plastic inserts, felt markers, non-reflecting road studs, etcetera. Whatever we are going to provide as a material, so as to provide a marking, certain specifications are there and that needs to be followed. What it says is the daytime luminance at 45 degree centigrade, it should be minimum 65 percent for white and 45 percent for yellow. When you talk about the drying and setting, it says it should not be more than 15 minutes. So, as early as possible. A skid resistance should not be less than 45 and the softening point should be somewhere in a range of 102.5 degree centigrade plus minus 9.5 degree centigrade. The specifications which have been talked here, they are either being taken from US that is H2 or from UK that is the British standards BS. So, these have been taken forward from there only. You can see that how it is being done. So, you have the studs, different type of studs are there, they have been placed at a location on the carriageway. You find that the studs are pure white or they may be orange, they may be orange and red, they may be white and red. So, depending on what is that information which needs to be provided to the driver, these colors have been used and these colors are going to provide the restrictive versus unrestrictive conditions on a road section. We can have these type of uh, plastic uh, materials or the tapes which can be just placed at the top of the pavement surface and then they are being pressed so that it glues at that one or there may be markings by use of a paint. And in between that, then there are studs being in, uh, placed which has the luminance being coming through these particular things. As soon as uh, the light comes on it, it reflects back and that provides the driver that what are the restricted conditions which are there. Now, these school had, they are basically the prefabricated uh, uh, letters which are there which have been used so as to create this particular type of a word message. Here there is a machine which is being used and the powder is there that has been placed and what you can see is then finally, you have that uh, material which is coming at, at the top of the pavement surface in terms of say the pavement um, pa paint type and this is a case of a yellow one. Now, when we talk about the thermoplastics then depending on the traffic volume, the life is 2 to 3 years. When you talk about the cold applied plastic strips, usually we use them on an edge strips. Prefabricated trip markings, they can be of both types temporary and the semi temporary type of a things and they are used for objects, transverse lines, parkings or the messages. Sometimes certain conditions may change, so we use temporary there, but otherwise the permanent can be used and the life again is 3 to 6 months or there can be refractorized stripping powders like uh, crosswalks, school zones and legions. So, this is a uh, the different ways we are going to look at it. We have a solvent bond or the water bond paint markings, but then they can be used for a shorter period because they get eroded or abraded as the vehicle tires goes at the top of it. Then metal or plastic inserts or felt markers usually are used in the urban areas. The reason remains the same with respect to the 
paints being used, reflecting or non-reflecting road studs are also there and they are basically used so as to limit the crossings or approaches or bays. We have talked about that at up to how much height they can protrude above the surface of the pavement. So, it should not be less than 10 mm and not more than 20 mm, width should not be more than 130 mm and the color can be white, red, yellow or green depending on what situation needs to be provided. When you talk about the paints, the paints are also available in different colors and here we are adding red and purple which is further restrictive defining the uh, hazardous situations. They have been defined by uh, the Indian standard code requirements and we have discussed about that where we are going to use what color of the paint. White is usually not restrictive, yellow is restrictive, blue is for public transportation, BRTs, paratransit systems, green is for active transportation like bicycle or non-motorized modes and red and purple is for the hazardous locations. But whatever paints has been utilized, they should have a reflectivity and they should have a visibility from a certain distance and that is being defined by way of a distance being traveled in 2 seconds at a design speed. So, based on these speeds which are there, then this purview distance changes at 17 meters at a speed of 30 kilometers per hour to 67 meters at a speed of 120 kilometers per hour. So, uh, that sort of visibility needs to be maintained when you have pre, uh, pre provided the markings at the top of it. So, with this we close our interaction in this particular lecture and we will be coming back with the leftover things in the next lecture. Till then, thank you and bye.